Hello brethren and praise the Lord. Welcome to the book of Lamentations as one of our episodes this time. And um, we've been talking about personalities. And so in this book here, let's get there to see what does it tell us. But first let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you that you give us opportunity to interact with your word and we pray the Lord you bless us at this particular moment again as we read through the book of Lamentations, to pick our lessons that will guide us through in our journey. We thank you, honor your God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brethren, God remains our Father, and there is somewhere it is written that God is God, and he caused the things to happen. He caused the things to be written down for our correction, for our teaching for our energizement. Now, we've been looking at personalities in the Bible. Now, let's get back again and read the book of Lamentations and see what does it tell us about our life. Now, but before we say what does it tell us, tell us about our life, let's look back and look at the context, how it was written, why it was written. And for what reason, really? And who might have written it? What led to this book to be called Lamentations? Remember, it is one of the books in the Bible. Now, there were revisions here and there. And so it was demarcated from the book of Jeremiah. And so it is one of them that we read, those of us who read the Bible, having 66 books. But of course, remember, there are some other scriptures, some other Bibles that contain more than that. And that one will be a story of another day. But let us look at this book of Lamentation. Lamentation comes from the word, lament. And lament, when someone talks about lament, you'll know that, you'll know that actually it's talking about issues of grief, issues of agony, issues of crying. And so the book of Lamentations, and when you go to the local languages, spoken, spoken in Uganda, spoken everywhere, you'll find translated variously, depending on how they look at agony times, crying times, lamenting times, grief times. In Uganda, this book is called Okukungubaga. Okungubaga, because there is something that actually, uh, that in that language, there's something that people are looking at. Why was it called so? And Kukungubaga in Uganda, it's Kukungubagira, Omufu, Kukungubagira. You know, it is times of difficulty, times of agony, times of grief, times of crying. And so, that's one language. Now, when you turn to another one that maybe you'd like to also to hear, Luma Saba, it is called Hu Hui Hu Namira. It's, you know, it is like you find someone, time of grief, and is seated, the way I'm seated, and thinking deep because of the trouble, because of the agony, because of, you know, it's, so it is a time of bending your head down because of the situation in which you are. Now, this man, whoever wrote it, but there is a strong evidence that links this book to prophet Jeremiah. And so that's why the writers connect the actual lamentations of Jeremiah. Okukungubaga kwa Jeremiah. And so, it gives a strong evidence that actually it was Jeremiah that wrote it, that Jeremiah was its author. And so, it gives a sense of weeping. It gives a sense of laments. It gives a sense of sad events, sad moments in life. Anguished response to the state of affairs. What could have happened? That there was a time of anguish. There was a time of crying, grief. And look at the times. We have looked at the book of Jeremiah. The times that came. What people did. What people said. 
And because of their own actions, God became angry with them. And the prosperity that they had attained, the peace that they were enjoying, the joy that was spreading in their territory, time came when it was no more. And why do you lament? For instance, why do you cry? For instance, what brings about grief? And so it was even then, at that time, during the writer's time, that actually the prophet, and remember, maybe it just remind you that one of the things that, that Jeremiah talked about, one of the references about the prophet Jeremiah is that actually it was called the weeping prophet. I said that at one moment, and I just want to remind us that actually the times of weeping could have been linked to this the book of Lamentations that was written by Jeremiah. And so I just want to read a few verses to give us a basis because actually many, many people quote also this book, but there are certain verses like I will highlight in a few moments. But let's see, how does it open? How does it begin? And the section heading written at above chapter one is how lonely sits the city. Now, you know the times of loneliness, when you are alone and when you are lonely, it can be an agonizing time, unless if you are able to deal with such a situation. So verse one, the writer says, how lonely sits the city that was full of people. How like a widow has she become? She who was great among the nations, she who was a princess among the provinces has become a slave. Here you can tell that there was something that had gone totally wrong. You can tell that something had fallen from the high level to the low level. You can really tell from the opening verses that something was not right. The reason why she who was great is not no more. She who was a princess is now no more. And so in verse two, he continues and says, she weeps bitterly in the night with the tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. Can you imagine? All her friends have dealt treacherously with her they have become her enemies. You see, things have shifted. There has been a shift. There has been a shift, and therefore, it brings about a lament, it brings about agony, it brings about anguish. Judah has gone into exile because of affliction and had servitude. She dwells now among the nations, but finds no resting place. Can you imagine? Finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for none come to the festival. All her gates are desolate. Her priests groan. Her virgins have become afflicted and she herself suffers bitterly. Friends, reading this book will tell a lot about the good times that we could experience at one moment. Joyous moments, merrymaking, dancing, eating well, Growing fat, doing well, could be financially, could be health-wise, could be academically, name it, could be socially, doing well, could be physically, doing well, could be, name it anything, well, 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 well times. But there are moments when this book reminds us that there are times when things go wrong. Now, this, this person is 
backtracking, looking back how things were. She who was, she who was, but now no more. So this book reminds us of the better times that could be in. Now, what caused this? What led to the agonies? What led to the anguish? Now, Jeremiah, so we are saying the writer, brings this to notice. He had done a survey. And when you read, like I've been reading a few verses, you discover that the man had walked around, has seen things the way they were at the beginning. He must have lived at a time when things were good, times were better, cheers, joy, lovely, peace, name it, whatever it is. But now, at the way that the things are, Jeremiah, in his survey, discovered that the city had a lot of pain. He discovered that there were lots of suffering in the city or in the, the environment, in the surrounding, in the, in the times, in the, during the generation. He discovered there was destruction everywhere. He discovered there was agony everywhere. And so this makes one lament. This makes one to lament, to fall down. Like in Uganda, like I said, the name of the book, Okungvaga. Like in Rumasa, it's about Hukuyunamira. There were things that actually were making someone to bend his head. Have you ever seen someone who used to walk with his head high and actually doing, talking, energy, talking tough, talking. But when things go wrong and you are defeated, look, talk about the people who play football and the, the way they talk and or even boxers when they are pretty much and they're talking nice, they're talking heavy, they're talking strong, they're talking what? But after they have been defeated, the energy that was used at the beginning is not the energy that is used when they are defeated. And so this book brings that kind of um, you know, you know, spirit there. It brings that kind of picture that actually the people, the, the, nice, the nice houses, the nice roads, and the nice what had now come down. And so Jeremiah looks at the pain, he looks at the destruction, looks at the suffering, looks at the destruction everywhere. And then it makes the man, it makes the person lament. And so the name of the book. So all these conditions, friends, make Jeremiah the author puzzled due to the evil that had been done and the suffering that spread all over. And all of us actually find ourselves in the similar situations when things are not going right. Could it be in your house? Could it be at your workplace? Could it be in your city? Could it be anywhere? Are things moving on? as God desires them to be. Now here, Jeremiah looks at the condition that were suffering, spreading everywhere. And so he sits down and laments. So at the center of the book, at the center of the book, we find the effect of sin, the effect of rebellion leading to tragedy, leading to suffering, leading to trouble, leading to destruction. Now, as you talk about the effect of sin, bring about tragedy, and therefore the book is lamentation. But you will discover point number two in here. Number one is effect of sin, bring tragedy, but also there is hope, praise the Lord. As you read it, you will find that at the center there is hope, in the Lord. And we're going to read those few verses there. Sin bring tragedy, but also repentance bringing hope. And we have spoken this about this, you know, personalities that we have looked at from the very beginning. We have looked at times where they have been, you know, in the hard situations. But God is a loving God, is a caring father. He does not desire the death of a sinner, but a sinner to repent and live. Pray the Lord. And so this is very, very important. So being at the center of tragedy is sin. It was at the center because Jeremiah acknowledges the dire state 
in which this country was, in which this city was. And many, many things had gone wrong. He quotes some of them that had gone wrong. Now, I just want to look at a few with you that um, made Jeremiah lament. Look at Lamentation chapter 2, verse 21. Something that actually when you read, you say, oh, oh, so this happened. 2, 21. Let's read there and see that in the dust of the streets lie the young and old. My young women and my young men have fallen by the sword. You have killed them in the day of your anger, slaughtering without pity. Can you imagine? This is actually when he saw things that happened in the city. Babylon had been allowed by God to besiege and destroy Jerusalem. And so Jeremiah looks at what was happening and says, what? Can this also happen in the city? Yes, that happened. And so he put his hand on the cheek and lamented. Now, formerly, there were people that you could see and happy homes, happy families. But because of the besiege, things go, went wrong. Now, what amazed me, when you read what Jeremiah, what made Jeremiah to cry, to lament, what led Jeremiah anguish? Look at chapter 4, verse 10. Chapter 4, verse 10, no lamentations. Formerly compassionate mothers cooking their own children. Can't that make someone cry? Lamentations 4.10 says, The hands, the hands of compassionate women have boiled their own children. Can you imagine? They became their food during the destruction of the daughter of my people. Now, read on. Verse 11, going, going down, 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 and on, and on, and on, down, on. You'll discover that actually many things make the Nehemiah mourn. And the reason why he even mentioned that the streets were mourning. Can you imagine a mother picking her child? What could have led that to that, really? Of course, conditions were not, conditions were bad. Could it have been lack of food? But we have, we have heard during our times, people sacrificing their own children for the sake of what? When we hear about them, someone sacrifices a child, someone sacrifices a wife, someone sacrifices a husband, someone sacrifices for the sake of riches. Well, that is what's happening during our times. But this one could have been maybe no food, no nothing. And so what do we do? And so this, whatever happened then, and when we look at what's happening now, makes us weep also, brings anguish to our hearts. And so we cry to God in heaven and say, God, like we're going to get, to get into the hope that actually this book also brings. So it became evident when you read, there are only five chapters, by the way, just one sitting, you sit and read five chapters of Lamentations and you'll get the entire story. And you'll see what happened then. What made it to become a book of lamentations. But listen. Hope is in there. Pray the Lord. Hope in the book of lamentations. Chapter 3. Now there is a poem there. Talking about great is your faithfulness. Have we ever sung a song? Great is your faithfulness. And so you find in chapter 3, it's a poem that actually brings hope to this people. But just because of the time, we cannot read the entire chapter. But let us look at um, chapter 3, verses maybe 22 to 25. But before we read chapter 3, everything had been pre-planned by God himself. Let me just quote chapter 2, verse 17. Before we read chapter 3, 2.17, that nothing happens unless the Lord himself has brought it to happen. Now, 2.17, the Bible says that the Lord, the Lord has done what he purposed. 
He has carried out his word, which he commanded long ago. He has shown, he has thrown down without pity. He has made the enemy rejoice over you and exalted the might, the might of your foes. Now, whatever happened, the effect of their own doing. Do you remember Jeremiah? Do you remember Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, 20? That when you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And when you are disobedient, when you are disobedient, you will be devoured by the sword. And so this is something that actually we learn even during our generation, that God will help us really to be willing and obedient to God's word. And so this truth 17 shows us the summary of everything that happened that actually it was because of what the people themselves had done, had thought their hearts were evil to the marrow. Now, in chapter 3, hope, 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 pray the Lord. Chapter 3, verse 22. Now, let us just read that and then just mention a few things and I'll wind up with this. 3, chapter 3, chapter 3, chapter 3, um, verse 20, let's begin at verse 20. My soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Pray the Lord. I have already said this, and I say it again. To this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Verse 22, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Now, in the book of Lamentations, is crying, is anguish, but there is, there is a thread of hope. Even during our times, you wake up in the morning hopeless. You go to bed hopeless. But remember that actually this is one of the best, one of the most quoted verses as well. Now, in verse 24, the Lord is my portion, pray the Lord. And I say it with my heart, the Lord is my portion. Can you also say it? The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. It is good, it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation, for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Now, pray the Lord. Read chapter 3 and you will find hope for yourselves. Now, it also calls people to repentance. Verse 40. 41. It says, let us test and examine our ways. And so we are calling people in this generation. Now, 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 now. Let us test. Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven. Verse 42. And say, we have transgressed and rebelled and you have not forgiven. Now read on. Let us examine our ways. So friends, as we come to the end of this episode, many, many things make us weep, even during our time. Jeremiah lamented because of his times. Do you have a lament, a lament in your heart because of what's happening around us in our generation, in our life? Laments everywhere because of the things that are happening in our society. Some of them are social evils. Some of them are economic evils. But also, we also have religious evils that are happening that make someone feel anguish in their heart. And it annoys God. It angers God. And so those of us who are still, those of you who are still faithful, those of us who are still faithful and walking our way, our walk, shall we continue walking our walk? So each chapter here has a meaning. And we pray that actually the Lord enables you. So, Finally, I discover from the book of Lamentation that even in the time of terrible judgment, God remains a God of hope. Can we say amen? Yes, God remains a God of hope even when the times of terrible judgment. God remains hope, our hope. The way we have read chapter 3, verses 20 following, following. 
He still remains compassionate and forgiving God. So we ran to him. I go to him. You go to him. And say, God, I test and examine my ways. I come back to you. Please, will you do it as a family? Will you do it at your workplace? Will you do it as a group? Will you do it as a church? Will you do it? Because God is compassionate. Now, our God is a loving God. We have read that already in chapter 3. Turning back to God is so purposeful. And um, laying our complaints to him, asking for help, putting our laments, keep it, giving our anguish to God. We spread ourselves to him. And so even during our time, we have all this happening in our midst. But the thing is, our God is a loving father. His mercies are new every morning. And he's compassionate. And so as in as much as we're talking about these evils in a society that happen, call to mind. Chapter 3, verse 21, call to mind. Therefore, have hope. Even in the book of Lamentation, this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. And this is why am I having hope? Is because the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is faithfulness is what makes the day for me. His mercy is new every morning. May God bless you and watch over you. As we continue reading in the book of Lamentations, that should not only be lamentations, lamenting, anguish, crying, weeping, but there will be hope in your life and so that God will answer your prayer and give you the hope that will propel you to another day. Then I will go the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.